Welcome back to the App Builder creation videos. We're getting seriously close to a full featured app here. If you've not watched earlier videos, do go and check them out. The Creating an App Builder playlist in our YouTube channel shows a lot of the fine features at work and how to create a complex app from the standard widgets and a little custom code. My apologies if you can hear the background noise. It's road work season here and it's just inescapable. But anyhow, let's jump straight in. We're going to be filling out the screens panel of our user interface, but let's remind ourselves what that is first of all. So I'm going to jump back to our Visual Studio code. And from here, I'm just going to open our terminal and run the application so we can see where we're at. Loving those motivational messages again. So we have the screen that we've seen many times before. And as you've noticed in previous videos, the file list is going to appear here. We'll open our example project, and that's going to fill out the files in the project. But of course, this little screens item has been down here since the beginning, pretty much. And there's nothing in there, which is super weird, because this is a visual app builder. We have to choose our file to edit it. Actually, it would make more sense just to interact with the graphics right away. So that's what we're going to be looking at. This panel here needs to be filled out. Let's just get started. We're going to mimic the way that this tree has been created with a data source and fill it out down here. But there's a few subtle differences. So first, we're going to want to open the main user interface file. And like the file tree data binding, we're going to add a new screen tree. But this is not going to be of URIs. This is going to be a binding of strings. Um, actually a string tree. We're going to be displaying a tree like we have done with the files, but in this case we don't necessarily want to simply display the exact um, URI or the underlying information. We're used to interacting with files, so we can do that, but when it comes to elements of a user interface setup, we're probably going to want to render the name slightly differently. So I'll just quickly save that and it's going to fix up our alignment. And remind me, we've not used that yet. Not a problem at all. Next, we're going to use this further down in our code. We have created the files tree here. So this is where the main part of our work is going to be. And the accordion that places them both is down here. So let's just um, take that temporary widget out and make a new tree here. We're going to just use the standard tree constructor this time, instead of the um, tree with data, which is how we use this up here, because we're going to do a few custom things. The identifier and the string name aren't necessarily going to line up. The unique ID has to be unique, um, but the text that we're rendering doesn't have to be and probably won't be, so we can't use the default data constructor for um, strings. So we use new tree and we're going to insert the data manually instead. So the functions that a tree needs, let's just get that from the constructor here because I can never actually remember all of them. It's a fairly complex widget. So we'll just copy those out and paste them in here and make a little modification. So the first parameter is the children UIDs for each of the IDs passed in. Um, the second is going to ask if this particular ID is a branch. That means, you know, can it be expanded to have child items? So we'll fill that in as well. Then a little bit like list and table, we need to create an item to represent a node in the tree. We can just do that quite simply at the moment by returning a new label and screen item, something like that. And then in this update callback, we will fill in the details. Uh, we'll obviously be looking for an ID passed in and that will update the object. Well, we'll do that in a little bit. Apply data. Now, what is it that we're going to be doing here? Well, we need to fill in the blanks that make this tree actually do the things that we're wanting to. 
So we're going to reference the, um, the string tree that we created before. Uh, so for the node ID, we need to know the child nodes. We can do that by asking for the screen tree to get the child IDs of the ID that we're asking for. That's pretty straightforward because the data structure is aligned. And then, is this a branch? To know if this is a branch, we're just going to ask if there are any child nodes. It's an approximation, but it will work just for now. So the screen tree, that is a peculiar suggestion. Screen tree, we can ask for child IDs again of the ID in question. And then instead of returning the item, we can return true if the length of IDs for this is greater than zero. So that should return the, oh, sorry, I just realized didn't uh, need to keep those names in there. That's messed up my parsing a little. Um, so here we're returning, yeah, true. If there are child IDs to this ID, must be a branch. And then further on, uh, I didn't explain the Boolean parameter to the create and update functions is saying whether or not it is going to be um, a branch. So it's true if this is something that contains other things, because you may want different styling based on that parameter. I think we're probably going to ignore it, at least for now. So that's our tree. And, ah, yes, I did copy that out from, uh, from the package. So um, widget just needs a little bit of prefix for the right namespace there. That's looking okay. What's this error about here? Do I have a version? Hmm. Can anybody spot my mistake? There was no mistake. I saved the file, the error went away. So we've created our new tree here. And now that we have a screens tree, let's just put it up to the top because I think that's going to be the main way that people interact when they come into the app. So we've created it, put it into the interface. Um, obviously, we need to put some data in. There's actually going to be two passes to include data in here. Firstly, we have at the top level the list of screens in our project, just like the list of files in the top level directory. But when you open one of them, it's going to insert the whole tree of widget hierarchy. So first, we're going to be able to say which screens exist by reading the file system. And then we will need to update the hierarchy based on which file is open. So firstly, we're going to go and look at the files side of things. So in the project.go, we're already adding files to tree for the file tree using this. We can sneak a little bit of code in that allows us to populate our screens tree as well. So we have a little bit of code here that checks to see if we're trying to open a GUI.go file, or rather trying to list it in the tree. And we, we don't want to show those. They're auto-generated. There's no need to put them in the user interface. But there is also the GUI.json files, which is where the data is stored. We, if you remember, we trimmed that off earlier. Um, in, the, in the tree when we display the nodes. So in this case, we're going to see if that um, position is recognized and then um, check that it is in there at the end of the string. So that several, we just added more characters on, so that becomes none. So if that's the case, we should, we should do something here. So we have the um, screen's data structure. Actually, we don't. We passed in the tree um, URI tree binding uh, for the setup. So let's do the same with the screens, which is a string tree. Oh, if I can spell string. And um, that is going to want the g dot screen tree passed in there. And then we can add to the data, and we will use the um, root, so making sure that we're appending to the 
the roots so they appear at the top level um, and then um, we're appending into a tree so we specify the ID of this child node and then the value so the ID well that's going to be the um, string representation of the URI that's the unique identifier as well I don't know if you'd have thought this through um, the top level screens in this display are going to be the files that contain them and then the items in it will be sub URIs which we'll construct later on so we put the file URI there and the title will be um, the name uh, but let's chop off the unneeded nine characters at the end uh, so that's oh well yeah basically the same that we had there so we should be able to see that that's going to add a screen for each of the UI JSON files encountered okay so that should um, load the data we'll need to go back to our user interface to actually do something about it. Um, we still have just this placeholder name. So to make that happen, we should update the text of our label, uh, which is um, the object. It's this object here that we're reusing. Um, well, well, we should name all the parameters we don't need that real boolean actually for completeness we don't need that one either so that's the object cast to a label widget and then l dot set text so the text of the item is going to be the value of the node at the id that's being passed in because the tree is saying for this unique id what should be done for the node. So we can get that uh, the node, uh, the, the data of that node. Um, in fact, it's going to return an error. So the data and ignore the error from the screen tree get a value at the ID. And we can set the text to that value. So the, I think that's correct. So the tree will just display whatever string has been stored against that UID. That seems about right. And one other thing that we can do is to consider opening the file. That's what that's one step too far just now. Let's just check that everything is in place. Ah, I missed a parameter. So, oh yes, of course, that's that's red. There's a dot on our scroll bar here. Uh, I missed passing the screens further in because that method to add files recurses. It's a tree structure. Let's try that. So our project doesn't open. I have forgotten a nil check somewhere. What's happening here? So the GUI.go 102 SVG or screen tree child IDs. Um, I guess how did that have I forgotten to initialize it perhaps? That might be the issue. So we created we defined the screen tree here next to the file tree. I think it wasn't initialized. Yes, if we look here, the file tree has been initialized, but the screen tree hasn't. That's going to be better. Okay, at least the UI should load this time. We will open that recent project and it has opened. The files are there. Ah, and the screens are there. So that didn't quite update immediately. That will be, why would that be? Yes. So we created a new tree that wasn't a data bound tree, but we're using data binding behind the scenes. So what's, what's disconnected here 
is the tree doesn't know where the visual tree doesn't know when the data tree has been updated. So we create that new tree here. It worked before for files because it is actually bound to the data. So let's manually do that binding, or at least uh, cause the refresh. So the screen tree, um, we can add a listener. So anytime the data there changes, we're going to update our screen tree. To do that, we can do bind binding new data listener. And we just pass in a function to call. In this case, it's pretty easy. It's just screens.refresh. Refresh. So anytime the data in screen tree changes, then our tree representation is going to update. Now, with any luck, that should be now fully operational. There we go. So our files are still down here. Our screens are up here. And the main screen is that item there. Well, that's a good first start. We need to now add the items below this so that the tree shows the full widget hierarchy. Now we can go and open the file by tapping it on this panel. And for now, that's a way to load the UI. We should update this screens panel when the user interface is loaded. So when that file opens, we can use this data to populate the tree of widget hierarchy. So let's look at that next. Quite a few things there. First of all, I suppose we're going to need to uh, hook into the file open code, which I think should be in this project file. Uh, although I could be wrong. Where was open file? Ah, the file handling for that is in the user interface file. So here we are opening the file, we initialize an editor for that URI and then add it to the tab. Okay, so we have an editor, the editor is doing the heavy lifting. That's not a problem. In fact, that's great. What we can do is we can ask this editor for some information and then we can use that to populate the tree that we have control over. So. To do that, we're going to need the editor to tell us the root object so that we can traverse the tree. To do that, it will need to be edit.root. Now, object, let's, let's call a function asking for the root object. Now, edit is of type editor, very generic. So that's not going to be possible for all files that are opened. We need to know if this was a graphical file. So we'll do a uh, type check. If the editor is of type um, uh, graphical user interface, I suppose. Editor. Oh, goodness me, editor. If that's the case, then we can go ahead and do our graphical thing by using the user interface version of editor. However, we haven't defined this type. The user interface file uh, for the editor, sorry, in here, if we look at this um, make GUI function, it returns all the way down here a simple editor. Simple editor is completely generic. We used it for all of our file types. So we need to do just a little bit more work for the user interface file. We can define the GUI editor here, and that is going to extend the simple editor. Uh, oh, that's a struct, sorry. And also, it's going to have a function on it. That will be on simple uh, the GUI editor. And we called it root object which was to return a canvas object that we can work with. And that would return the root, but we don't know what that is. So let's just privately have a root in here of the right type. So now we've got our GUI editor. We're able to use that here. We're not doing anything with the object yet. It's, it's still not compiling. 
um, but we're not actually initializing this. So let's make that change. Instead of a simple editor, we will set up a GUI editor. So that only has one named parameter, the root, which is the object that we have created above. If you remember, we loaded it from the file using a, a helpful library. And then we're going to want to specify the inherited fields, which we can't really do directly uh, on the object creation. So then that's that, the GUI.palettes is tabs, and the save is our save function. So now we can return that instead should still function exactly the same because we've just inherited all of the behavior from the simple renderer. I'm sorry, from the simple editor. So now we have an object that we can work with. What are we going to do? How are we going to, to work through that object tree? Uh, okay, well, first of all, because we're loading a file, there might have been a file loaded before us. So let's just make sure that the tree is uh, reset at this level. So the um, the URI for our file should be removed and because it's a tree it's going to throw away all of the children nodes from that as well. So we haven't emptied the tree, there might be other user interface uh, screens there, but we're just going to replace the one that we know we are. So that means I suppose first of all we need to append ourselves again. Really, the remove was a shorthand for just delete the children. <laughs> so, screen tree append. We want at the root level again. So, anything to root. Then the URL um, dot string is our unique ID, and the name was a name. I think that's what we did. Is that right? Ah, almost. So we just chop the end off the name. Possibly a good place for a healthy function some other time. And now we're going to want To add the children items. I think this is definitely a place for a helper function because it's going to recurse. It's a, a tree data structure. So we are going to add the objects to the tree. Uh, let's pass in what probably needed here. The object, which hasn't been used yet, is the key to it. That's the data structure that we're going to traverse to add the items to our tree. So the screen tree is the thing that we're going to add them to. And we'll need the um, ID, the unique ID for um, our uh, parent, which is going to be um, the URI. Uh, but because we now want to separate from the file name to the items hidden inside it, I'm going to just put a little hash symbol in there so that we can see that thing added to it or after the file name, and we can split on that later. I think that's everything. So really we want this add objects to tree. So let's make that function. A little helper at the bottom, I think. Add ob object to tree. And to save us a little time, I'm just going to copy this in from a scratch pad. So let me paste that there. We have objects to tree. If we save that, the input should be fixed. Um, the GUI 2. Ah, that's our user interface library. So let me grab the import for that and just pop that in. Um, it didn't quite figure out what we were doing. That's the GUI to import. And 
So now that code we've pasted should be working. Let's just quickly step through it though. So what we have is the hash symbol separating um, the file part from the uh, inner ID. And here the ID, the node ID, is figuring out how to uniquely represent the objects. And in this case, we're using sprintf to uh, just convert the pointer to a string. So we're getting the memory address. Because these objects are loaded and we're being manipulated in the um, screen, the pointer addresses are going to stay the same. So we can use that as an index. And the root is going to be um, what we append to. So it might be the top level, or it might be that we are children of a container. Um, here we are just working out what's the node root. So if you remember, the tree has just the file URIs at the top level. So if we are the root element, that is if the hash symbol is the last thing, we are just going to ask it to append to the URI without it, so that the tree works from our file names at the root. That's going to be adding our data to the string tree. And then that's basically our top level container connected. We're going to traverse down. So if the object that we are uh, adding right now is a container, then for each of the objects, we're going to want to descend down the tree. And for that, we're using the node ID, which was created from the root, which has the hash on the end and the pointer to the container. And we add our own when it descends into this method. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, you can peruse it at your leisure later, but hopefully we can see that working. Um, Adding the objects to the tree isn't quite aligning. What happened there? Sorry, let me just look at my notes here. Uh, ah, yes, sorry, I forgot. We need the root URI and then the node ID. Okay, so that's, that's grand. So we're loading that when the file is opened and we're pushing the data into the tree, which is connected uh, with a data, um, a data listener. So if we run this now, we may see something pretty cool. We'll open a recent project and this main is the screen. So let's open the file and this main is now with something else. There is a container inside main, which is the container that the label on the button is inside. And in the container is a label and a button. Well, there you go. That's worked quite nicely. <laughs> yeah, actually, congratulations. We've just visualized uh, an object tree in memory uh, onto a, a visual tree, I suppose. So we can, in theory, interact with them, but we haven't done anything about tap handling. So we should skip on to that next, I think. As this tree was created in two steps, we have the URI for a file, and then the inner URI, which is representing something in memory inside that file that we have loaded. So let's step into that and look at them separately. In fact, we can solve one of the peculiarities with the code as it is now, that the main uh, doesn't do anything when you tap on it, but also, we know that the main screen exists. So why not open that when the screen opens? We can actually connect those two together by having a tap handler for the file and then selecting it when we realize that one has been added. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, we'll, we'll step through that just here. So in our user interface code, we'll work alongside the tree, the uh, visual tree, this screens widget tree here and add an on tapped. So this is what's going to execute, uh, oh, sorry, not on tapped, on selected. So when something chooses a node of the tree, we respond by doing something. And that's going to be um, a widget dot tree node ID. Oops, sorry. Let's pass them. Now, what are we going to want to do here? Well, that's another good question. 
there's two separate things. First of all, let's handle when it's the top level, when it's just a, a, a file um, URI that's been tapped. So how do we know? Well, we are going to check to see if the ID, um, if the ID has a, a hash in it. So um, strings dot contains if the ID contains the hash symbol, then it is a child object. So if it doesn't, then we're just handling a straightforward URI. We'll need to parse that because it is just a string. So that is storage.parse URI and pass that the ID. And we should have a, a URI out of the end of that. What do we do with that? So we're going to open the, the file. That could error. Um, opened in file returns an error. So if there is an error, error's not nil, what should we do? Um, I'll use the dialog package, show the error to our user into the uh, window, which is g.win, and then what should we do? We've just been selected, so let's unselect. And select our ID. Just it doesn't look like we've opened something that failed to open. Now we've hooked that up for just the top level files with an unselected, but we still aren't doing anything when the user interface loads for the first time. So if we go back to the project work here, we're adding screens when we find them in add files to tree. So we could do a little trick here. And if there are some screens defined, just open that first file, a much more intuitive experience, I think. So let us um, do exactly that. If there are screens, um, well, it would be the length of the. But what is screens? That's going to be the children of the root of the tree. We've been appending them here. So it would be g.screen tree child IDs for the root tree node ID. Child IDs from that is, yep, a list of strings. If the list is greater than zero, then what we're going to do is um, tap. Yeah, we're just going to tap on one of them. And how do we do that? Good question. We don't have a reference to the screens, but we do have, I think, a reference to the um, Explorer panel. I think we do. Let's see how that's set up here. So um, the uh, where to go? Screen tree. Let's create the accordion. Here is the left panel. What do we do with left? Hmm. We don't do anything with it. Okay, well, we're going to want to manipulate that accordion later. So let's do. Left. Let's define a new type in our user interface here. Um, which dot accordion. So now we can do something with that. So we have the explorer. We can get the items. Now the screen tree is item zero. Um, the first item in an accordion. The detail is a uh, dot tree. And we can ask the tree to select the ID 
of that screen. And that's going to be simply the first screen. We know that there's more than one listed, so we'll just take the first one. And that will be fine. Um, that was just an import issue. So now when we open the project, we'll find out whether any screens were found and choose one of them. And if there weren't, uh, let's otherwise open, um, sorry, close that tab and open the um, other panel. Yeah, so that's the flip side of the accordion being created. We open the screens panel because we're expecting there's going to be some screens. Um, if we discover that there aren't, we'll just close that and open the regular file panel instead. Okay, good, good. So open our recent project, X2, and there we go. Excellent. So it has immediately filled this out because we've chosen this item, it's opened the file, and the file being opened has populated the data into our panel. So what we want to do also is to handle what happens when we're tapping something in this panel that isn't a file URI. So let's do that just now, and then we're probably done with this panel. So where did we set that up? Back up here. Our unselected, um, oh, wrong unselected, here, unselected. If the strings doesn't contain a hash, we do this. Well, let's just quickly invert that, put that into the else block, and do a little bit of code here to handle what if it does have a hash in it. So we're tapping on an item that isn't a root file. Okay, I'm going to just grab something from the um, scratch pad again here because we're a little short on time and it's pretty um, dense code to be looking at. But I'll talk it through. So obviously the first thing we do is we split on this hash so that we can get the URI, which is parsed from the first part of it, and then the path, uh, which is, uh, let me just say, sorry, um, the path is on the right hand side and the uh, item here is trying to well, check that we've got uh, a, a, a node in um, node in the tree, the colon there, marks that we've tapped on something. It's not just the root, but there was a hash and nothing else. Uh, we're once again doing some special things with the GUI editor. And what we're asking for is for it to select a widget that we're going to find. The find object is another little thing I'm going to pull out from my pre-written code. So let's just add that as well. And we'll pop that beneath our uh, add object to tree function. Now you might recognize this. It's sort of very similar to a method that we used when we were working with objects in memory to figure out which was being tapped on the user interface. But this time we're using the um, printf again with the pointer address and we're traversing to see whether it matches. So here if our pointer string matches that which has been passed in we have the right object. Otherwise we check through all of the objects of our container if we are one, returning that if we find and if not, we're returning nil. Okay, pretty quick overview there. Uh, but the way that we use that is to get the object from the root, which is that object uh, method, sorry, that we exported earlier. And this select method, select widget method rather, hasn't been created yet. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll put it next to the root object uh, here editor and um, that will get passed in a canvas object 
and we just need to figure out how to make that happen. So inside our GUI, we already have done that. Ah, sorry, yes, so the widget selector, this tapper is the thing that we're going to want to call into. Um, I think we'll need to keep a reference to So we'll pop that there, and the tapper will be um, asked to call back with the object that we are looking to select, and then we need to initialize it. So the tapper here is being set up there, and when we create our GUI here, is going to pass the tapper in. Okay, I think that makes sense. We're making use of some internal types that we've defined. And so when we choose a label, not so much. So I, th I think um, I called a function that just updates internal state. Um, so let's say choose is what we want to happen, um, and the, sorry, the GUI selector is doing a couple extra things here. So let's just separate that out briefly. Um, so that's going to want to choose the uh, found object, and this is going to be the widget selectors choose method. Canvas object passed in, and we'll just make sure that that sets the chosen, it updates the visuals, and then it calls back the data handling, which is what we were just doing manually. We're just running that recent project, X2. We have our UI here, and we're going to drop into label. There we go. Okay, so label, button, and I could even choose the container. And if you look over here, that's updating the components here, and we can make the changes. Okay, excellent. Sorry about the distraction, that was a bit a bit mammoth. Now, there's a lot of debug left, I'll tidy that up after the video. But I did just say uh, on the video description that I wanted to also add an about screen to the application. And we can do that really quite quickly. If I go to our main file here, we're setting up a menu, and we're going to want to quickly drop in a, um, an about screen into the menu. So in our make menu, let's just see here. So we're creating a file menu. I just want to put an about item in the file menu instead of, uh, well, underneath save, above the automatically included quit item. So let's just define that. It's a new... Uh, new menu item, new menu item, it's called about, and it's going to just run a show about method, which doesn't exist. So let's just add that to the bottom of our file. Let me, if you don't mind, paste one more time from the notes I have, and we'll talk it through. So the about function, the show about function, is going to show a standard about screen, which has been included in the fine x dialog package. So what I'm going to need to do quickly is to just add that import back up at the top. Uh, we have a new import going here, it's called it x dialog for fine x dialog package. And we'll use that here. It takes a piece of content to display. It infers a lot from our application packaging and then takes a list of links that we might want to include. So here I've put an about link and a sponsor link. If I save that, the URL import is corrected and uh, that should work, but we've just got a little error. Um, 
perhaps uh, a Go mod tidy is going to find that missing package. There we go. Okay, so let's just run this at one last time. Instead of opening our project, we'll go to the menus. Now, I did say it was in the file menu, but we're on a Mac, so it's quite special. It has the About over here. And you can see it's pop up our About window. It's got the icon, the name and the version from our metadata, and that little description text that we added is shown here. That's pretty handy, but there's one more thing that I would just like to do, which is this sponsor link here. As you know, this project is partially open source, and it's something that we'd love more people to be able to help support. So we're opening sponsorship with a $10 donation where you can have your name in the About screen. So let's just very quickly see how we can make that possible. We'll close that away, and I'm just going to drop in a slightly new content for our About window. So in Show About, all the way down here, instead of this very simple text, I'll put um, a little bit more. And this is where you see a little bit more of what the About window can do. This is some markdown content, which is not very well formatted. Um, oh, I can't really call it About. I've used that name already, so let's just call it Text. Text. Um, this is going to say Sponsors, and your name could go here. So running this one last time for today, We'll go to the menu and about, and you'll see also on top of this lovely parallax effect, your name could be here. Well, thanks so much for watching all the way to the end today. Uh, I hope that you might consider donating to the project, having your name on that lovely about screen so that we can continue doing more of this open source content. With the screens panel that you saw today, Hopefully you can now understand your user interface hierarchy a little bit better and interact with the containers, the intermediate level groupings, a little bit more easily. Do, of course, keep your eye on our website. As always, you can find what we're doing at fission.app. It's going to show the latest and greatest of what's happening. We're going to be opening up for, for some early testing pretty soon, so if you're interested, do consider signing up and putting your name on that waiting list. And before you leave the video today, don't forget to hit subscribe, and if you'd be interested, comment below to say what you would like to see in upcoming videos. We'll join you next time when we might be talking about the topic of your choice. Thanks, and have a great day.